As you know, I'm attorney Jason Lawrence. We are gathered here for the reading of the last will and testament of my late client, Randall Woods. I wonder if it'd be appropriate to serve light refreshments before we begin. Might as well get another use out of the polished silver. Oh, nothing like the catered affair we had after this morning's service. I wanted to do it right, of course, for Randall. Such a pity we can't enjoy our own funerals. It all seems so unreal. If Anne hadn't brought her tribe, we'd have some of those fancy sandwiches left. But they stuffed them down, just like an Oscar Mayer bologna lunch. If you hear my mother going on like this, she wouldn't know she's a perfectly intelligent, sensible person. Oh, well, at least we have the banana nut bread from Enid. We understand, Catherine. No one acts themselves at a time like this. Poor Enid. Banana nut bread is her one specialty. She's always thrilled when a funeral comes along. <laughs> Actually, she's not supposed to be here. Mother, Mr. Lawrence is reading Daddy's will, and you decided not to be here. Oh, that's right. I'm not supposed to be here. I probably should be, though, to watch out for your interests with... No, I understand you wouldn't want to be in the same room with her. In the same room? But what about me? Did anybody even bother to think of me in that monstrous fancy church? I'm sure you had it all planned out. You see, me in the back row where I could barely even see the casket. And then I had to watch all of you parading, crying underneath your black veils. But nobody ever even seeing me sitting there. Is she serious when I looked up and had to see her at a time like this? I asked the funeral director, shouldn't I be riding with them to the cemetery? But he said no, with his little twitchy nose. There wouldn't be room. That big limousine, but no room. <laughs> Ride with us. The procession, everything, so phony. And what did you do with the flowers that I sent you? Shutting me out, lying to the world. Why does she act this way? Why do they act this way? As if something's our fault. As if I've done something wrong. It's not as if we're cruel people. Brash and sensitive bitch. I tried to be friendly. Oh, what did old Robert Burns say? Oh, would some power the gifty gee us to see ourselves as others see us? Suddenly, I'm not sure if I see anything clearly. Understandable, Catherine. People may pride themselves on being objective. But we see everything with a built-in judgment. God, I wish someone would give me that gift. What did you just say? To be given the gift to see ourselves as others see us. Sir, I'm sorry, but you can't it's come in. It's never easy. You Captain. can't come in at a time like this. But it's exactly at a time Sir, like you'll have to leave. Yeah, please, wait. Oh, death in the family, a cataclysmic upheaval. Indeed it has been. At a time like this, yet when the hearts are open and emotions are raw, reality surrenders to grief. Surrender reality? It's rather disturbing. Oh, not at all. It's just uh, the impossible. To understand, to see clearly? Uh, it becomes possible. Uh, when reality surrenders, a noble idea such as Catherine's can uh, manifest itself in uh, <laughs> all sorts of ways. Do you be there to help me see things fairly? Yes. She couldn't do it. She wouldn't even try. Oh, everybody becomes involved. Ripple effect, you know, and that's good. That's good. Everybody transcending the customary <coughs> condition together. So you'd be there to help me? To help you all. Of course, sir. Exploration of the past, testing old attitudes can be painful. Old attitudes? Hey, it's best to uh, understand the past, to be done with it before facing the future. Jason, you'll be sure the will is fair. I wonder what my role has been. Oh, my, do be careful, dear. Uh, it's been a hard week for you, hasn't it? Uh, for everyone here. Oh, yes, it has. Hey, of course, the uh, difficulties in communication were present before this morning's funeral. Oh, very elegant it was. We had the full choir at St. Stephen's in their new robes. And they had to order an extra flower card for all the floral tributes. Mr. Woods was loved and respected by the entire community in which he had resided in for the past 30 years. It was a lovely write-up. Thank you, Mrs. Woods. Now, Born in Iowa, he came to the Northfield area after serving in the U.S. Army. Catherine, do you recall the photo of Daddy in his uniform? The one Grandmother Woods had framed for us. Maybe I should have given that to the man from the paper. The picture he used was very nice, Mother. Did I tell him he'd met Daddy once? At Rotary, I think he said. <coughs> or the Elks. Mr. Woods was active in many organizations in our town. Thank you, Mrs. Woods. <laughs> now, let's review what was evolving before I arrived. Uh, following this morning's funeral, a reading of the will was to take place, and Mrs. Woods wanted to be present but felt that she couldn't be in the same room as the uh, uh, the other young lady. Uh, Catherine, just uh, one small question, if I might ask, uh, about your description of your mother. <laughs> Wait a moment, how are you slanting this? I just thought you'd help me sort hold things on, out. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Of course you can play your own role as you see fit, Catherine, but the, the
The gift to see others as we see, uh, uh, to see ourselves as others see us, that extends to seeing others accurately as well. Surely you understand how difficult it's been with oh, the funeral and dealing with I do with her. understand, but uh, see, I'm just asking if we're being 100% totally honest. Uh, or should we modify that description of your mother? Now, uh, let me see, what was it now? Ah, very sensible. Yes, you're right. My mother was a goddamn name. Oh, no, no, you're sure. No, of course not. What's wrong with me today? I'm not one to use profanity and then to say something like awful like that. It happens after every funeral. One person starts off and then another. They often keep it going for a year or more. Well, for the record, my mother's disconcerted manner was certainly understandable after we had the scene. Yeah, but I won't listen to that whimpering play for sympathy. I'm willing to try this to make sure I've seen things fairly, but what more does she want? God, why can't we just wipe her out of our lives? I have a right to be here. Rights, rights. I'm so tired of people everywhere demanding their rights. It's so unfair. Ladies, 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 ladies
Uh, Mr. Schwartz, <laughs> might we want to examine that statement for its 100% totally honest accuracy? Oh, must I guess? No, Mother, this is my responsibility. My father was an excellent provider. A born salesman, Randall was. Took a job selling auto supply after the war. That he was. When he'd land a new account, he'd say, God bless President Eisenhower and the U.S. Highway. I never understood what that man had to do with auto supply, but I left the family's politics to Randall. Daddy was just daddy. When he was away, I took care of the house and raised the baby, but I never complained. He hadn't married any frilly fool of a girl. How can I describe daddy? He did well in the stock market. He traveled a lot. And when he was home, he could sometimes be... On another line. He could sometimes be... Yesterday's oatmeal. Somewhat distant. Did you hear what they said? Well, that's what you heard them say, but they didn't. They didn't what? Well, prejudicially, you may have heard them say it, and subliminally, they may have even heard them no, say it. No, that's a double time. Make them take back what they said. Well, I'm sorry. I can question judgment and memory and try to pull an honest performance from the cast, but I can't play it for you. Now, the principals all agree that the man was often out of town. And when he was at home, he could often be out of town. <laughs> yes, I think we can go. No, I can't. You're talking about my father. Oh, they not twist, no nice eye for them. Oh, no, no. Certainly no one here would really wish to speak ill of the dead. The man was a saint. It was just that he didn't know about us. <laughs> so now I suppose we're supposed to hear about the three little piggies. Can you imagine that slut having not one illegitimate trial, but three? Back when no decent woman would have triplets. I don't believe either of the boys ever lived to adulthood, so they've never given us any bother. Just you. Why? Why? Good, you're speaking directly to one another. Speaking directly to her? Then whatever I said, I take it back. Do you hear me, girl? I was not speaking to you directly, and I never shall! For 20 years, I dreamed of waking up and hearing my mother say, Your father came home last night, and we're still madly in love. We're getting married. Finally, it was true. Well, that I'd found him at any rate. And I thought about calling him Pop, but I decided that sounded too much like a balloon. And then I thought of Father. It was too formal, but I loved to roll it around on my tongue. I thought, Father, shall we stroll to the library together? It wouldn't have mattered if he was famous or if he sat in the park making faces at the pigeons all day long. The most important thing was I finally knew his name. Dear Mr. Woods, my name is Nora Barnes, 20 years old, and I believe you are my father. <laughs> Bet that made him jump right out of his chair. <laughs> when great Aunt Eleanor died, she left a letter stating that my father's name was Randall Woods. Aunt Ele Eleanor was always very nice, and she took care of me so that Mom could work. I'm not going to tell him that the factory work made her sick, though. I wouldn't want him to feel bad. You'd be very proud of me. I had top honors at graduation, and I was offered a college scholarship. A smart girl. Went to college. Isn't that nice? We couldn't accept it, of course. We didn't have two buttons to rub together, let alone money for books and all the extras. So now you know the story of my life. Please, please, get in touch soon with your loving daughter, Nora Barnes. So Liz Barnes had a daughter. Can you read it? She didn't tell him about her baby. Vester, I'm glad you're here. This is Jason Lawrence, the Woods attorney, Vester O'Brien, Nora's therapist. It happened back when Nora was barely 17. The baby's father was a school teacher, and considerably older. Understandable in Nora's case? Yes, but from what I heard, he wasn't much... Well, adolescent girls do get the most unaccountable crushes. Oh, and boys, too. I myself was bewitched by the woman who gave out the bowling shoes. <laughs> Josie, that was her name. Long red nails. Brassy yellow hair. Oh, really, Mr. Lawrence? And then we assume you're no longer smitten. What about yourself? Oh, I escaped any strange teenage crushes. Ah, uh, Vesta, might we want to examine that statement for its 100% totally honest accuracy? Oh, all oh, right. I had this little thing for Sidney Zinfarelli at the branch library. Long, thin face, a little chip in his tooth. Am I correct that Nora's teacher friend skipped town? Yes. Left a note saying that he was very fond of her and that he would provide for the child. She heard from him once, an envelope with a $20 bill inside. So she ended up doing the same 
foolish thing her mother had done. She didn't see it as foolish. Merely an unlucky event in an unlucky life. Ah, uh, we see that all the time. Young women who never expect much. So she had a baby. And I'll bet she's been freeloading out the welfare system ever since. You know, the baby died tragically shortly after birth. Some irregularity with the heart. Poor little fellow. Randall mentioned to me once that there was a cardiac condition that ran in his family. Aren't Catherine's children beautiful? And I think it could have been one of them that died. Well, it just proves that the Lord is good. Do you remember that when I was pregnant, <laughs> Grandmother Woods went on and on about the importance of having a boy to carry on the Woods name, as if I could do something about it. You must remember her, Jason, a rather imperious woman. We just moved here and I didn't know a soul. It can be hard on a young woman when she's pregnant. So frightening and alone. Oh my. I suppose. Yes, Iris, yes. I'm uh, sure Nora was deeply depressed after the death of the baby. Yes, that's when she came to see me. It's up to you now. I'm not sure. Facing the past usually chases the ghosts away.
The detective who checked on her after she got in touch with your father. You had someone spy? Well, not spy exactly. Just follow her a little. Oh, gee, does that seem right? Catherine, here was an illegitimate, illegitimate girl scratching at our door. You're not taking her side. You know, Mother, they don't use that word now. I shouldn't have discharged Radigan so soon. He'd have told me the whole story about how your father not only got in touch with that girl, he'd actually visited her. So I wonder if that And Radigan would have told me that she'd visited you at work. Catherine, what were you thinking of not to tell me about it? What was the purpose of upsetting you? I just thought your daddy would have a big fight. I'd have gotten a restraining order. You're kidding. A restraining order on daddy? For heaven's sakes, Catherine, on that girl! She shouldn't have been put in jail bothering you that way. I don't suppose she bothered me that much. It all seems so long ago. I just got my from college. Okay, I see her. Thanks very much. Oh, you scared me, may I help you? Well, these are for you, for me. A little hello. Well, hello. Is there something I can do for you, miss? Barnes, didn't you get my message? No, I'm sorry. Shoot, I left a message with the switchboard Friday afternoon that I'd stop by on my way through Northfield today. I'm sorry, no one told me you were coming. And I'm afraid I'm really busy. I mean, this is my first job, and I just started this past week. Oh, well, that's why I decided to come by. Daddy told me that you got a job here. You know, you look just like your picture. Daddy probably showed you the one he has of me. I'm afraid it wasn't very good. Oh, these are from my garden. I picked my favorite. Oh, oh favorite. Sorry, that's all right. I, I was just trying to keep them fresh on the bus. You're just like my mother. No kidding, I am. She does the same thing, carries around her flowers in those little vials, and drives this crazy spilling water all over the place. Oh, I'm sorry, that wasn't very nice to say. <laughs> you and my mother would make great buddies, and those flowers, what do you call them? They're her absolute favorites. She never finds anyone else who can grow them. Really? Your mother grows rubber and lilies? <sighs> Is that, uh, are you engaged? This past weekend. It's beautiful. It belonged to Arthur's great-grandmother. He said I could have the setting changed, but I said no. It's wonderful. And he said yes. <laughs> What's the fun in life if you can't be a little ostentatious now and then? Isn't that cute? Neither of us is ostentatious, I mean. I'm glad you like it. Oh, and I think it's great. And I don't think it's ostentatious at all. It's exactly what I'd want if I got engaged. I'll have the matching diamond band when we get married. Wow. Congratulations. Oh, you're not supposed to say that to a girl, are you? That's what my aunt told me. You congratulate the boy, and then you give the girl your best wishes. That one doesn't sound like she did the chasing. Isn't that silly? I'm not sure either of us did the chasing. One of my sorority sisters said I'd make the perfect match for her cousins since we were both only children and we both loved tennis and horses. Finally, we double dated, and Arthur and I knew right away that this was <laughs> over. That's so romantic. But it could never happen to me since I didn't go to college. And the boys who did go to college, well, they never came back to Central Falls. At least not looking for someone to settle down with. Oh gosh, I'm going on and on. I'm sorry. Dad says I'm a freight train when I get excited, and I really am excited about meeting you. You know, I'm drawing a blank. Who's your father? What? Catherine, it's me, Nora Barnes. Oh, oh my god, you're the girl who called that other time, and you came here to see me? Oh my god! Well, of course, to finally meet. We're you, sisters. Do you realize this is my first week on my first job, and you came in here, and... Oh my god, did anyone see you come in? Well, uh, of course, I asked at the front desk where to find oh you. Oh my god, you didn't tell me who you were. Well, no. Nothing about Daddy, about... Understand, of course, my position. I just thought we could have lunch. Lunch? Is that such a wild idea? Or don't people with ostentatious rings eat lunch with the common folk? Please, you're being rude. I'm being what, rude? I didn't say. How about trying snob on for size 100% and counting? Shh, the people at the desk will hear you. Oh, and I'd never want that to happen, would I? And you know what? When I leave, I can pretend that it was a different Catherine Woods that I was looking for. And you know what? That's the truth. Charming bitch. <laughs> Her husband died. The 
but it'll be the little things that you come across unexpectedly. Catherine told me she'd help me clean out, but I've never shifted my responsibilities to anyone. Every woman's turn for that comes soon enough. I'll send Randall's clothes to the Salvation Army. Clothes won't be as difficult as the shoes. Somehow it'll be the shoes. And his reading glasses. I remember it was my father's pocket knife that almost did my mother in. Oh, here I am talking like a fool. I've heard you people have a way of getting people to talk about things, but I'm not one to discuss personal feelings, especially with a stranger. Of course. It all happened so fast, you see. One morning, Randall said, Goodbye, Iris. I'll see you on Thursday. Now I'll always be waiting. <laughs> How will I ever get from through those Thursdays from now on? And then that girl showing up this morning at the funeral, it just left me feeling... I'll leave you to your feelings. Oh, no, please, sit down. <laughs> I understand you're her psychiatrist. I never dreamed I'd have one of those in my house. I'm a therapist, actually. Well, whatever you call yourself, I'll be honest. I don't approve of that sort of thing. You must know that it fosters weakness. Things were different in my day. We kept things to ourselves. It isn't always easy to accept changes. I have trouble sometimes. Really? But I would have thought that pretending would be second nature to you by now. What do you mean? Well, you can't tell me you like being around crazy people all day, listening to them whine about how the world's done them all wrong. Perhaps you don't have an accurate understanding of therapy, Mrs. Woods. The people we see are often healthier in their outlook than people who don't come to see us. Then you're telling me that the rest of us are crazy. No, and crazy isn't a word we use. Then do you say she's a mental case? Is that the fashionable term now? And if you're referring to Nora, she's certainly oh, not I in the Oh, I Naturally, you have to take her side. It's not a question of taking sides. I'm sure the situation is difficult for all of you. At a stressful time like this, meeting your husband's child. He didn't go looking for her, you know. I can't understand how anyone connected with Randall's family would go to, uh, would go see someone in your line of work. Maybe if I explain to you Oh my God, I just had the most awful thought. You don't suppose that director fellow thinks I'm going to have to make it perfectly clear to him that the girl's mental problems come from her mother's side. Now, Mrs. Woods, there are no No one in Randall's family was crazy. Some of the women were rather willful, but not really crazy. Why am I telling you these things? Really, it's funny. I'm not one to discuss personal feelings, you know. Why? No, of course not. Actually, Randall's mother was a tyrant. Here I go again. I met Catherine in the garden, and she asked me to bring these inside. Oh, well, thank you. You know, when I was president of the Northfield Gardeners, I started a junior garden club, and it was very <coughs> successful. But who'd go to a junior garden club meeting nowadays? All the young girls are out with their jobs, they're out busy having affairs, plenty of the older ones too. I don't suppose you'd have time. <laughs> In your line of work, you wouldn't have a garden? <laughs> On the contrary. My garden isn't large, but I, I thoroughly enjoy getting my hands into the soil. Really? I wouldn't have thought so. I was especially admiring your lilies. I don't know what's happened to mine. I'm, I'm ready to give up on them. Oh, you mustn't, my dear. Maybe you're not planting them correctly. What's the pH of your soil? Oh, I'm afraid I've never tested it. There's your answer. You must remember the gardener's three little words. Sand, compost, loam. Especially if you have clay soil. Lilies don't like to get their little feet wet, you know. That must be it. And another thing. I'm sure you've heard that people like to talk to their plants. But they really perk up if you sing to them. And I found that they like cold porter best. I hope that can be our little secret. Absolutely. And I have this wonderful little book that I'd like to give to you. I promise you your lilies will be the envy of the neighborhood. Oh, please, don't go to any trouble. Oh, it's no trouble at all. I want to put some water anyway. And speak to that director fellow about that little mental matter. He's uh, working them pretty hard in there. The coffee pot's been emptied at least twice. Thank heaven, Vereen. It's banana nut bread. Sorry I couldn't get here earlier. You missed very little. Shortly after he came on the scene, the lady started squabbling, and he turned the lights out on them. I wish I could have seen their faces. 
at least now they seem to be making some progress. Yes, two steps forward, one step back. Still, that's the way it Like a on. stubborn old dog with a bone. <laughs> what do you suppose that was all about? I suspect someone's been talking to him about mental problems. Oh? Oh. Still, the old girl is trying. I was pleasantly surprised to hear that Nora's sister was attempting this process. Catherine, yes. She was always such a, a shy, pretty little thing. I remember the Girl Scout parades. No matter how the other little monkeys were carrying on, Catherine kept her chin up and looked straight ahead. She had a predictable life. Oh, yes. There weren't many bumps on Catherine's roller coaster. <laughs> to speak plainly, this is probably the damnedest thing she's ever come up with. Questioning the past, and today of all days? I've learned never to be surprised at anything the human mind is capable of. And we hope that Nora will benefit from this introspection. Anyway, she'll be well taken care of now. Only th though that might create other problems. I must say I was not quite prepared for this guardian angel with blue flannel wings. Does Nora really believe in it? Perhaps. Yes, I suppose she must sometimes. She seems like an intelligent young woman. Oh, she is, but with the absence of a parental figure, the son child sometimes explores alternative paths. A never-ending search for what's missing? Mm -hmm. Still, blue flannel wings. Now, wouldn't you say that's rather bizarre? I'm a therapist, Jason. I've learned, I've been introduced to angels in the most unusual forms you can imagine. Though I often think they must sleep a lot on the job. Well, at least Nora has you. <coughs> Very caring woman, I can see. And may I say that you are a rarity in your profession. Well, then we make quite a pair. Will you join me some fresh air? Thank you. And do you suppose that we have the gift to see ourselves as others see us? Let's hope so. <laughs> oh, Nora, just the one to help me fill in some blanks. I'll try. Uh, your mother never told you about your father. No, she simply wouldn't talk about him or even mention his name. Wasn't she upset when she found out you'd uh, got in touch with him? I mean, that must have been a bit of a shocker. Well, I expect so, but Mom wasn't one to show her feelings. <laughs> the old stray coming around after 20 years. She should have taken a broom to him. I asked, did she want to see him? And she just said, no, thank you, Nora. Like I'd offered her a dish of tapioca pudding or something. I'll just sit in my room and read while you entertain your father, she said. And that's exactly what she did. Never mattered that ain't a wife and child at home, and I never knew about it. I tried to get Mom to dress up and have dinner with us, but she just wouldn't. My God, she was hoping for something to start up again. He'd called, hello there, Liz. And she'd call down, hello, Randall, in half a voice, but she'd never dare peek her nose out the door until she was sure he'd gone. Too bad she hadn't kept something else out of sight 20 years earlier. <laughs> <laughs> So your mother never saw your father again? Well, of course she did. <laughs> One time my father arrived a little bit early. I think it was on purpose. And Mom was still downstairs, so we all had dinner together. And then afterwards, Dad asked her to play the piano while I cleaned up the kitchen. I could hear them talking and laughing and almost flirting with each other. <coughs> so cute. And then afterwards, it seemed as though Dad was coming more to see Mom than to see me. Oh, that's right. The one who used to spread her legs for him. So now he's got both the whore and the daughter waiting with a good meal and evening's entertainment before he's on his way. It wasn't like that. Why is she so vicious? She fixes cozy meals with her mother and my husband, and I'm supposed to be pleasant about it? Then you're as stupid as she was. She may have been a small town girl, but she was not stupid. No, while you fetched his slippers and cooked his meal, she sat like an insipid milkman saying, Yes, Randall. No, Randall. Have some more pot roast, Randall. Didn't she feel entitled to a crumb from that man? She who liked his bastards around for nine months? Let me tell you something, my girl. Randall Woods gave that woman nothing, but he owed her plenty. Mother, what are you saying? Oh, I don't know. Feeling entitled? Well, what about her? Did she confront him, her darling husband? Over 20 years married, what good would it have done? Can't you stop this? To insist on knowing where he was going if he was off visiting you. It's not as if you mattered. You meant nothing. My God, you thought you meant something to him. But he, he was busy, I understood. Indeed. I adored my father. Oh, I'm sure you needed someone to adore. Well, he adored me too. He did, didn't he? Of course he did. I'm beginning to think Randall adored being adored. I was a good daughter to him. What do you think I was? He didn't need a daughter. But I needed a father.
father. And you tried to take mine. I never meant to shut you out. Surely there must have been room for me too. No! No, no, no! Why couldn't I have been a little bit more like that? Mom, we always 
Needing a witness. I'm a pushover when someone tells me I'm the best cook in Falls County. Oh, you hated yourself for ramming it, but you needed fodder for the old self-esteem. Isn't that what you said, the best cook in the county? I think I must have. Oh, how's that for your payoff? I think I must have. <laughs> Did you make another one of those Nestle Road pudding? I'll be honest with you, Dad. There's seldom money for pot roast, let alone fancy desserts. Oh? I'm afraid Nestle Road was a one-time item on the menu. Pot roast and strawberry jello are just fine. I can't help but feel sad sometimes, don't you, Daddy? Sad? For heaven's sake, no. Well, I do. About all the things that most fathers and daughters have shared. Like at school, the father-daughter banquets, and the Father's Day service at church. Hmm. That must have been fun for you. But well, Daddy, I could never take part in those things. <laughs> oh? Well, now, that's a shame. <laughs> you, uh, you must have attended those things with Catherine? I probably did. I don't recollect. Does it put himself out much, does he? Uh, <laughs> wasn't it right about here you made up your mind to uh, ask him something? I can't recall. Oh, he waited 20 years, remember? Now he's finally sitting here and you could say... Dad, I wanted to ask you. Dad, I wanted to ask you, well, about Mom and... How uh, is your mother? Got her nose stuck in a book, I'll bet. I'll just call her. No, wait, before you do, I, I really wanted to ask you something. But first, you were asking about my company? Yeah. Mine's a second office, that brick complex. We tripled our sales in 18 months. Look, Dad, we've never talked about you and Mom. Your mother and I? The fellows at the base said we were a good-looking pair. I can tell you that. You were feeling uh, a little, how can I put it, uh, frustrated deep down. <laughs> so what happened, Dad? What happened when? Really frustrated. <laughs> you had to swallow hard but not to... Once you found out, you, you know. As I recall, I got a letter saying that she might be in the family way. It was so long ago. I'm really tired. Oh, but you'd waited so long. What did you say to him next? Dad, I waited until I was 20 years old to find you. All of those years wondering. 20 years? Wanting to find your old dad, huh? Imagine that. <laughs> the direct hit was the only hope. <laughs> Look, Dad, I want to know what happened then after she wrote the letter. Well, obviously nature took its course and you arrived along with your brothers. Can you beat it? Triplets. Sorry about the losing. Well, yeah, I guess phrasing three of us would have been pretty difficult, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> the H word, how ironic, since you found it so hard to be 100% uh, totally honest about your feelings. Dad, why didn't she answer her letter? I don't know, Nora girl. I suppose I just didn't get to it right away. Didn't get to it? Well, okay, but what about a little bit later? You certainly are a question box, Nora girl. I think the letter got misplaced, or I lost the address. Many girls have false alarms, you know. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess if you weren't really sure, but... But no false alarms for me and your mother. I'd say we started a real free battle. Oh, oh, that Daddy. did it! Have a girl get in his face! What did you tell me? Nothing! Oh, how do you suppose that pot roast is doing? He works so hard. Oh, mate, nice. I mean, if you upset him, you might leave That's him. That's a lie! Stop it! Oh, there was something! No, there wasn't! Uh, deep down! No. Something you wanted yeah. to say! No! There was no. something! No! How about... She... Was... Alone. Yes. She was scared and she was alone and she was pregnant! How could you do that? How could you abandon us? Is she okay? No, no, I'm sure there wasn't anything at all that I wanted to say to Daddy. She's okay. She's done the best she could. Vesta, hi. I... I was just telling the director how much Daddy used to love my pot roast. Oh, there you are. I was wondering. Yes, Mrs. Woods. Well, I know it may seem a little bit unusual, but then again, show me something today that isn't unusual. So I decided to ask you yeah? about this thing that you do, helping people to see things that happened in the past. Uh, I was wondering if it could happen with something that didn't happen, although it might have happened, probably should have happened. Ah, uh, I think 
think I understand you. Well, yeah, we could make it happen, yes. We could? Well, you actually, you could. Oh, no, I couldn't do this. You're the one who's doing this sort of thing. Well, what if I was to tell you if it was something you really wanted? You'll be fine. Uh, no, wait, don't go. Oh, I don't know who that man is, but he can be kind of a nervy fellow.
five thousand dollars to each of her children. To my to Nora, my surprise child, I leave fifteen hundred dollars, since I have on previous occasions given her generous cash gifts. Furthermore, Attorney Jason Lawrence is to write the girl that, being my own flesh and blood, she will be allowed the use of my surname as her own. Nora Barnes will henceforth be known as Nora Woods. Oh and to Nora's mother, Elizabeth Barnes, who did a fine job of bringing up the girl, I leave my leather-bound set of the Harvard classics. <laughs> Should she predecease me, the books will be given instead to the local library. Is that what he meant? Is that what he meant when he assured me I'd be well taken care of? Did he mean to do differently? Did somebody talk him out of it? No, never think that. Randall always acted on his own. Daddy, his Nora girl. What could he be thinking? What a strange man. A, a father who won't take care of his own child. I'm sure Randall was pleased with himself and thought everyone else would think him a fine fellow. Be strong, Nora. Be strong. I can hardly breathe. I'm sorry, my dear. You know, I had to invite you to be present as, as one of the beneficiaries. But the gift of his surname, why would he think I'd want such a thing after all these years? Mr. Lawrence, may I instruct you to write a letter on my behalf? Yes, certainly. Just a moment. To whom it may concern, henceforth, Nora Barnes shall continue to be known as Nora Barnes. Since she never wished to be anything else in the first place, certainly not a poor second in the Woods family. I'm sure Catherine and Mrs. Woods are offended, but they shouldn't hang by their ears waiting for an apology. I do not wish to give or receive anything from this family ever again. Uh, I'm sure we're not offended under the circumstances. Oh, and I remember that silly young girl, that dreamer, that she found her father after so many empty years. And a sister, too. I wish she realized we didn't do any of this. Well, I thought, finally, that there'd be some financial support, of course, and I wouldn't want to minimize its importance, but those who are fond of crying about how money doesn't mean anything, have you noticed they're always the ones with something in the bank? <laughs> but yet, the worst hurt doesn't even concern the money. I, I understand, my dear. It's what the giving represents. What were the generous cash gifts he referred to? Do you know? Yes. That would be checks he'd sent her now and then. I couldn't have totaled more than a few thousand dollars. Rather meager in lieu of a lifetime support. And he probably ate up half of it in pot roast. <laughs> I suppose deep down I, I must have always known. My father was never what I wanted him to be. That's right, isn't it? He never damned was. He never damned was. I assume <coughs> that you'll be leaving in the morning? I couldn't afford lodging at the dog pound at the moment. I'm getting a bus out tonight. And the books are? I can have them packed and then sent to your mother. Mr. Lawrence, my mother was admitted a week ago to our local memory loss facility. I'm sure the local library will be grateful for the set of Harvard classics. Such a magnificent piece. I'm so sorry, so sorry uh, about everything. I was, uh, perhaps you could... Jason, I wouldn't know what to do. If only Randall were here. <laughs> I've always wanted a sister. It's just not like, mother, what do I want to do? Everybody has done very well. And I would just like to say, good going, all of you. Well, that sounded just like Daddy. Randall. Whenever the potatoes came out just right, he'd always say, Good going, Nora. And after my recitals. And when you brought home your report card, he'd always say, Good going, Catherine. I can't help but wonder. Yes, so would Daddy think. If he could see us all here together. I'm sure he would look at you with a sense of pride and a, a new feeling of understanding. He'd want to give you another chance to help right some wrongs, get acquainted, enjoy one another. Yes, he never did. But we wouldn't know how. Oh, you've done the groundwork. Just keep it going. <laughs> oh, no, my work here is finished. <laughs>